Okay guys, so after reviewing the errors that could impact control account and the list, let's apply that concept over here. So I've given you guys a question. You guys can see on 31st July 95, uh, the list of balances totaled 17,040. But on the same day, the sales ledger control account balance was 18,060. So what they're saying is when they drew the list of trade receivables, which means that they looked at A, B, C's individual account. They got this balance to be 17,040. But when they drew the sales ledger control account from the day books, they got that balance to be 18,060. Now, obviously, these two figures are different, which means that there are some errors. Our job over here is to correct these errors. All right. And and they're specifying that the following errors have been found. Our job is to correct these errors. So what we'll do first is we'll first draw a new control account. I'll call that to be an adjusted sales ledger control account. That, so let's draw that over here. So we'll draw an adjusted sales ledger control account over here. Adjusted means that the control account has been drawn. Now we're just trying to adjust it. And we can write that we will start off with our balance over here. So the adjusted sales ledger control account will start with 18,060. Remember, sales ledger control account refers to your trade receivables. They're your assets, so they all should come on the debit side. So your adjusted sales ledger control account should start from here. After that, we'll draw a list of balances in this space. Let me take you guys over here. So then they're asking to draw a list of balances. So we'll draw a simple statement and we'll say that we're starting with the balance at start, which is for your list of balances. And this figure was 17,040, right? So the list of trade receivable or list of balances will start with 17,040 and your control account has a balance of 18,060. Let's go through all the errors and we'll identify whether they will impact your control account, which is case one, whether they will impact our list, which was your individual errors. That is case two, or it's an omission, which will impact both control account and the list. All right. So let's go back to our errors. Okay. So let's start with our first error. The first error says a trade receivables balance of 750 has been omitted from the list of trade receivables. Now, what do you guys understand over here? I think they've made it clear that this balance has been omitted. Please don't get confused with the word omitted. It's saying this was omitted from the list of trade receivable. So the list, which is composed of your individual errors has been omitted. This is case number two. It's an individual error. So it will only impact our list of balances. So this balance is omitted from the list. So let's add it back to our balance. So over here, I will say add balance omitted. They have omitted and a balance. I'll add this back. 750 gets added over here. So my trade receivables increase, but this only impacts the list of trade receivables, not the control account. All right. It's an individual error. Let's go back again. Okay, the next one, although discount allowed of 60 has been entered in the cash book, it has not been posted to the customer's account. There is the hint guys, it was not entered in the customer's account, which means that it's missing from the individual's account. If it's missing from the individual's account, that is again case two. All right, the cash book is correct, which means the day books are correct. This discount allowed has been omitted from the individual's account, which means your list is incorrect. Now discount allowed, discount allowed means that I will receive less money. So my trade receivables should actually decrease. So I will write in my list of balances, less discount allowed omitted. And my trade receivables will decrease by 60. All right. Again, this only impacts your list of balances. Okay. Let's move forward. Okay. The next one, a debt of 200 has proved bad and has been written off. There was a bad debt. No entry has been made in the control account. So they're saying that this bad debt is actually missing from your control account. You haven't entered it in your control account. That's case one. 
although it might seem like it's completely omitted but they've specified that this was missing from your control account so this error has not been entered in your control account it was not entered in your day book but it did go into the individual's account so let's enter it in your control account so this time we will enter this in our adjuster sales ledger control account remember bad debt goes on the credit side it decreases your trade receivable i'll enter it over here all right so we've entered bad debt in the control account all right let's move forwards so i'll take you guys back here all right the next one number four t ballard was both a customer and a supplier so this guy is is a customer and a supplier which means it must be a contra his purchase ledger of 310 has been set off against sales ledger but nothing has been recorded in the control account again this this transaction has been omitted from the control account only that's case one so we need to enter the contra set off in our control account so let me take you guys back to our control account yeah so we can now enter the control account part so this will be contra set off 310 remember it again goes to the credit side because it reduces your trade receivables okay so moving forward we're done with the first four let's move to number five return inwards of 90 has not been entered anywhere in the account now they're saying that this transaction is completely omitted now this actually is a complete omission so i can say this is case number three all right so this transaction has been completely omitted so it would be missing from your and it would also be missing from your list now the next question is this return in words if your customers have returned goods it it means that they will pay you less so they should reduce your trade receivables so now let's enter it in a control account and and our list as well if i take you guys back in your account you can write sales return or return in what's 90 it reduces your trade receivable and then please enter this in your list as well so remember this was how our list looked like so i'm gonna write less less sales return over here too because they will reduce your trade receivables 90. So if a transaction is completely omitted, it should impact both your control account and, and your list as well. Okay, the next one. M -Nay returned goods worth 70 and this sum was debited to his account. Now, please understand this first. First of all, this error is for M -Nay. It means that M -Nay is an individual. So it means that this is an individual error and individual error is case two. It only impacts your list. All right. So remember when I said that if there's an error in totaling in your day book, it will impact your control account. If it's an individual error, which it is in this case, it will only impact your list. Now what happened over here was that M Nay's account was debited, which means that for a trade receivable, we all know this that sales return should go on the credit side. However, they have debited M Nay's account by 70. Okay, so in order to correct this, what I will have to do is I will have to first remove 70 on the, cre on the credit side. So I'll make an entry of 70 on the credit side. This will essentially cancel out the original entry that was posted to the debit side. Then I will enter 70 as sales return. So it means that I will have to credit my trade receivable account in total by 140. All right. So the reason is that sales return should reduce your trade receivable. However, you've entered it on the debit side. It means that you have increased your trade receivable by 70. So in order to remove it, you will have to decrease it by 140. The reason is first cancel out the 70 that increased it, which is over here, then write 70 to decrease it further. So what we figured it out is we have to reduce our trade receivable by 140. And since this is an individual error, it will only impact my list. So I can write less sales return incorrectly posted. 
which will be 140. All right, so I've, I've subtracted 140 from your list of balances. Let's move forward, guys. We're just left with a couple of more errors. Yeah, so I'm here. All right. So the last two are left. A trade receivables account was charged with 30 interest, but this was not recorded in the control account. I think they've specified it over here that this amount is missing from control account, which is case one. Now the question is this, if a trade receivable is, is charged with interest, it means that he is supposed to pay you further money, which means that this increases your trade receivable. All right. So as a result, this will go to your control account and it should go on the debit side. So in my control account, I can write interest that is charged. 30 goes to your control account and it would increase your trade receivable. Okay, guys, the last one. Let's take a look at the last one. Okay, now they're saying the sales day book has been undercasted by 10 sales day book now which error is this now sales day book is essentially one of the day books and under cost it means that the total is not correct so this means this would be case one it's a totaling error in the day book the individual's error is is correct but the total of your sales day book is incorrect that's case one it will impact your control account only now if sales is under costed how do i enter this in my control account let me come back over here. So I'll increase it on the debit side. I will say sales undercasted. And this amount will be 10. So I've entered this transaction in the adjusted sales ledger control account. Okay, now our job is to see what is the new balance on the control account and the list. So let's calculate it. So if you guys calculate the balance carried down on your adjusted sales ledger control account, it will be 17,500 and I can bring this down to be 17,500 as well. So that's the new balance on the sales ledger control account. Now let's do the same for the list of balances. So when you guys calculate the balance on your list as well, you will get this to be 17,500 as well. You guys should definitely verify this. That's the closing balance on the list of trade receivables or list of balances. So what we have done essentially is that the control account and the list now show the same figure. Remember, the basic purpose of a control account was to verify the list of balances is, is correct. Once we have adjusted all the errors, the control account and the list give us the same figure over here. That's how you reconcile them. Alright, I hope you guys understand this. I'm going to solve a past paper question in the next video.